the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry, presents The Cavalcade of America. Tonight's play, Star and Shield, starring Broderick Crawford and featuring the very young Miss Eileen Mary. Star and Shield is a true story out of the American canvas. It might happen anywhere, in your town or mine. It actually happened in Union City in the fall of 1952. Union City, New Jersey. Here's across the Hudson River at the sprawling giant of Gotham. Close enough to see the towers, and yet far enough away to be a big little city all on its own. Just a block or two off the main stem is the corner of Central Avenue and 32nd Street. To the Hudson County Motorcycle Police, this is Post 35. For the past 28 years, the regular noontime beat of Officer Bill Cameron. Uh, come on now, you kids. The whole lot of you on the double. Let's go, let's go. All right, make it snappy. Last one across is a ringtail monkey. Hey, you there. Little half pipe. Are you crossing or not? Come on now. You're holding up traffic. Your last warning. Are you coming? All right. Stay right where you are then. Now, see here, miss. Isn't there enough higgledy-piggledy in life without you having to park yourself on a street corner, not coming, not gone, just staying put? <laughs> now, look. You've been standing there ever since I came on duty. Now, you want to get across? No. You don't want to get across? No. You're just satisfied to stay where you are? Yes. Don't you go home for lunch? No. Well, you can't go back to school without lunch. Uh-huh. A truant, eh? What's that? A truant? Well, a truant... Well, a truant is someone that... that should be in school, but isn't. It's, uh, it's a pretty terrible crime. But I don't go to school. Oh? Aren't you going to do that traffic no more? No, I'm not. No, you sure you're not a truant? Because if you're not, the way you say it, it's a technicality. Now, never mind, never mind that now. now how old are you? I'm almost five. How old are you? Me, I'm 53. I... <laughs> what business is this of yours, how old I am? These are very personal questions. It's... Now, this is disgraceful. It's very private. It's... Look, I have two girls of my own. They're all grown up now. When they were small, they looked very much like you. But that's my private business, and I'm not telling anyone. Now, what's your name? That's private business, and I'm not telling anyone. But I'm a policeman. That's not anyone. That's someone. Oh, it's Margaret. Where do you live, Margaret? Down there. Won't your mommy be looking for you for lunch? I live with Grandma. Oh? Aren't you going to do that service no more? Well, you see, right now I happen to be on my lunch hour, and I... Hey, perhaps you'd like to join me, huh? You going to a restaurant? Yeah, I am. Can I have hamburger? Yep. And peach pie? Yep. So maybe I think I'll join you and I'll have hamburger and peach pie. Now, come on. You've got another swallow of milk there. Come on, stop sneezing and finish it up. Ah, you want some more? Oh, no. Yeah, come here, come here. Let me clean your face off with this napkin. You've got a milk and a hamburger mustache from ear to ear. <laughs> you know something? Hmm? I bet if you had a bath, you'd turn out to be real pretty. You tell your grandma I said so, would you? But we don't have a bath. Oh? You gotta think. Grandma can't lift me up and down anymore. I'm too big. So you don't get bathed, huh? Not all over. Not ever. Let me ask you something, Miss Margaret. Have you got a last name? Correct, Sally. Everybody has a last name. Oh, kittens don't. Don't they? Why not? They just don't. If I had a kitten, I would give it a last name. Would you? The same as yours? Same as mine. I would call it Kitty Leone. Leone, huh? 
That's your grandma's name, too? No, her name is Grandma. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Right now, we're going to pay a visit to Grandma. Can we come for lunch again tomorrow? Sure. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. You and me. You know what? We're going steady. Here's the place. We live in the back. Well, it isn't very fancy, is it, Margaret? My friend, Mary Joey, he calls us a little get out. He says it's full of poop. Do you think so? It wouldn't surprise me a bit. So come on, let's go in and see Grandma. Don't they ever have a light in this hallway? Don't need light. Nothing to see anywhere. Just old bowels and things. It's back here. I snuck in somebody else's house once. I went to Grandma, but I did. I snuck in, and do you know what? What? Right in the hall, they not only had a light, but you know what else? No, what else? A chair. I mean, a real one to sit on. Right in the hallway. You don't say. I guess that's real fancy. Isn't it? Uh huh. You know, I can't see a thing here. Is this the door? Uh huh. Grandma, don't hear so good. Yes? Yes, what is it? It's me, Grandma. Margaret? Yes, Grandma. Oh, I'm coming. Oh, Margaret, where have you been? Why, what's the matter, officer? Is something wrong? Margaret, what... It's all right, Grandma. This is my friend, Officer Campbell. He says we're going steady. How are you, ma'am? Well, has she been in trouble, officer? What is it? No, no, it's no trouble at all, Mother. We just had lunch together, and I had a few minutes before going back on duty, and I thought I'd oh. drop in and meet Grandma. Oh. Margaret told me a lot about you. May I come in? Well, yes, yeah, yeah, come in. Please do. Uh, sit down, sit down, officer, please. Well, thanks. Uh, I can offer you a cup of tea. No, 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 no. Don't get any trouble, Mother. Margaret and I had a fine time together. Matter of fact, she had the whole restaurant talking. <laughs> Not many youngsters her age have such fine manners at the table. Oh, well, manners is something for even poor folks can afford. <laughs> I do my best to teach her right. Look, I... Well, I don't want to sound inquisitive, Mother, but what about Margaret's folks, her parents? Well, her father's dead. Her mother lives and works in New York. She comes and visits sometimes when she can. And you're her grandmother? I'm her great-grandmother. Oh. Yes. You're, you're not going to start things to take Margaret away from me, are you? Take her to an institution, are no, you? No, no, I wouldn't do that, Mother. Why, we get by. But we get by pretty well. Huh? On what? Well, I've got a little pension. Well, we get by. Must be a little tough, huh? Well, we manage. Tell me, where does Margaret sleep? Hey, here, I'll show you. That's my bed. In here? Why, there isn't even a window in this room. Well, it ain't that silly. Having a window where you sleep. It's only dark when you sleep anyway. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's wrong with that stove, Mother? Oh, why, it's... It leaks. I can smell the oil all over the place, and that's dangerous. I've been meaning to buy a new one, but, uh, well, shopping's a little difficult for me. Yeah, I suppose it is. Look, Mother, tomorrow, the first thing, you go over to Kramer's department store and get yourself a new stove. Oh, we no. Oh. Here's ten dollars. Now, you tell Mr. Treadway that this is a down payment and he's to send me the payment book for the rest. Oh, it's, it's not right for me to let you do this. Why, why we're just strangers. I want to do it. I really do. I want to. And I don't think you have the right to refuse me, Mother. And I hope you won't. Oh, well. Well, all right, officer. Uh, but it's not for me. It's for Margaret. All right, let's look at it that way, then. It's for Margaret. Now, one other thing. I'd like to have Margaret come and spend the weekend with me. You mean me taking your house? Yeah, that's right. I've got two grown daughters. I know they'd love to meet Margaret. May she come? Well, yes. I suppose it'll be all right. I'm coming to your house, Mr. Campbell. Uh-huh. You mean I can live company? Yep. Yeah. I'm coming to eat and sleep? Well, that's part of it, Margaret. But the main reason you're coming is to have a bath. <laughs> Oh, no, Margaret. Those are all over the 
Please, no. You know, it's even better. Get a mop. And you'd better get that little water rat out of the bathtub before she dissolves. I'll get the mop. Mm. How's she coming in there, Darby? Oh, you were right, Pop. Right about what? She's cute as a button. Well, I've always had good taste. You know that. Is it all right for a daughter to tell her old man that he's a pretty sweet guy? Now, wait a minute. I'm a cop. They don't make cops sweet. It's bad for business. Oh, sure. A real tough cop. Now, don't start getting mushy with me. She's just a kid that needed a bath. Yeah, but lots of kids need baths. Yeah, and lots of grown-ups see that they get them. The whole world isn't made up of selfish souls, Dorothy. It's made up mostly of just plain people. Mostly good ones. Margaret! Look at me. Look at the ribbon in my hair. And that trick. Hey, come back here. I'm not finished. Oh, my gosh, the mop. Oh, forget the mop. Just get a can and we can bail. The bathroom's underwater. Hey, you are a pretty little cuss, aren't you? Now, come on. Off to bed. Valerie and Dorothy will take you up. Do I have to? Yes, you have to. I'm saying so and I'm a cop. Yes, sir. Don't forget to say your prayers. Oh, I don't have to say prayers. You only say prayers when you haven't got anything. And tonight, I've got just everything in the world. All right, guys, line up for roll call. Carol? Yeah, let's on. Patrol to Patterson Plank Road. Wyburn? Yeah. North Pike. Lynch? Yeah. 18 posts north of the circle. Campbell? Yep. 35 posts, Central Avenue, 32nd. Oh, Campbell, uh, I want to see you for a minute. Rusty Smith. You want to see me, Lieutenant? Well, Lieutenant first wants you. Come on, I'll go with you. Some room? You'll find out soon enough. Come on in. Here's Campbell, Lieutenant. Oh, yes. Hey, Campbell. How long have you been with the Hudson County Police? Let's see. I got in in 1925. Which means that by now you ought to know how this outfit operates. Well, yes. We but... operate as a team together. We don't like it when one of our men decides to make like a lone wolf. I don't know what you're talking about, Lieutenant. Oh, uh, innocent, huh? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I don't. We got undercover operators. We know what's going on. We got you nailed to the mast. Are you guys nuts? You might as well confess. Confess, though. There's a dame involved. A dame? Don't deny it. Buying her clothes. Fixing up her apartment. That's a pretty big order for a cop making sixty-seven fifty a week. Now, look. Now, you look, Campbell. We know the whole story. Yeah, uh, here she's a blonde, too. And her name is Margaret Leone. Oh, little Margaret. Yeah. So we're telling you now, Campbell, we're not letting you do this anymore. That's right. Not alone, anyway. What? We're in it with you. The whole department. We got a fund started. All the boys are chipping in. And what have you got to say about that? What have I got to say? Nothing, I... I... I better say nothing. You guys are a lot too tough for me. And now we return to our cavalcade story, Star and Shield... Starring Broderick Crawford as Bill Campbell and featuring Miss Eileen Mary as Margaret. During the months that followed, little Margaret Leone literally became a member of the Hudson County Motorcycle Police Corps. Standing straight and proud next to Bill Campbell, she'd appear at every roll call. Yeah? Yeah, Lieutenant. Post 12 and 14. Campbell? Yes, sir. Post 35. Leone? Yes, sir. Post 35 and a half. And the whole community took Margaret to its heart. Merchants dressed her like a princess. The Holy Family School enrolled her into kindergarten, and everybody repeated her bright little saying. Oh, so there you are, huh? How long have you been all afternoon? Been in a library. In the library. How did I play a trick on them? Oh, huh? what did you do? I took a five bus and I can't read. And then it was Thanksgiving, the day before Thanksgiving, and Officer Bill Campbell went up to the shabby little house on Central Street. 
Hello, Mother. Oh, hello, Officer Campbell. Oh, come in, please. How have you been feeling, Mother? You have been taking your medicine? Oh, yes, yes. Look, I just dropped by to ask if you and Margaret can come to the house tomorrow for Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, I'll pick I you don't... up in my car. Well, I don't know. I... I... There's well, something wrong. What is it? Well, I don't understand it. I... I don't know what to do. Oh, come on, Mother. What is it? Well, we... Margaret and me, we've got to get out. Get out? Yes, it's what they call an eviction. What? Yeah, they gave me the papers. Eviction? What's it all about? Well, they're going to tear this place down. That's what they say. I spoke to the social worker, and she says that it's the law that we have to get out. She says that it would be best for me to go to the county home, and, and Margaret, <laughs> Margaret, she'll have to go to... Oh, he can't take her like that. Is it right? Oh, now, wait a minute. Take it easy, Mother. Oh, well. I told you once I'd see that they wouldn't take Margaret away from you. And they won't. Oh, but how, how can you stop them if it's the law? I'll tell you what. You worry about how much turkey you can eat tomorrow. Let me worry about the law. <laughs> Now, before we get tearing into this turkey, I think maybe we ought to take a couple of seconds to think of all we have to be thankful for. It's a lot to crowd into a few seconds, I know, but well, let's give it a try, huh? All right, now we can dig in. What are you thankful for, Bill? Me? Well, for, for being alive, for being here, for having all of you with me, and... What about you, Margaret? For my new dress, for Grandma's getting better, for most of all, for best of all, for you. I've checked into the whole matter, Bill. There isn't much to do. They're tearing the old buildings down. That's a good thing. Yeah, Bill. sure it is, Lieutenant. But what's going to happen to Margaret and Grandma? they got to be kept together. I even offered to have him come and live with me, but the old lady said, no, she just won't do it. You can't blame her. It's a matter of pride. Well, I know that, too. But if they put her in the county home, Margaret will have to go to an institution. Well, there's no other way. I don't suppose she could go to New York and live with her mother. Look, her mother has one little room in a cheap boarding house. She barely makes enough to support herself. It means that Margaret will have to leave school. It's just... Hello, Bill. Hello, John. Uh-huh. Polite people knock on doors. But I'm a member of the force. Oh, <laughs> I forgot. Hey, 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 look at those new shoes. How'd you get so much mud on them? My friend little Joey and me, we done watching them new, new houses on Hudson Boulevard. You better be careful down around there. Oh, they're going to be the most wonderful houses, like our like palaces almost. Well, kind of old rent palaces. They have ice boxes with our ice and... Lieutenant. And bathtubs. We'll get them in there. Aren't you listening, Bill? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. It can't be done, Bill. I'm sure it's even real shy. Why can't it be done? Is it anybody listening to me? They got regulations that say only married couples with children can get in. I'm going to see Mayor Thoreau. Well, it's not the mayor who makes the regulations. It's the housing authority. I'm still going to go see the mayor. Well. Hmm? Well, what? Well, I think both of you are just godly, godly news. <laughs> But, Mayor Thoreau, it's the only way to keep Margaret and the old lady together. Can't something be done? You know what you're asking, Bill. There are regulations put down by the Housing Authority that are set, definite. To change them means public hearings, debates, all kinds of rigs. Excuse me, Mayor. There's a little story I remember. It's about Lincoln, I think. There was a woman who had four sons. They were all in the Army. Her husband had died, and unless she had one of her sons to... Help bring in the crop she'd be destitute. She'd gone to the War Department, the commanding officer. She'd gone everywhere. Always she got the same answer. It's impossible. It's regulations. But finally, in desperation, she got in to see Lincoln. He listened to her story, reached for a little pad of paper and a pencil, and he wrote two words. Do it. One of the boys got home. Hmm. I'm not Lincoln, Bill. You got a pad and a pencil. Why don't you use it? Hey, Bill! 
Uh, yes, Lieutenant. Where's your partner? Oh, Margaret. She's chalking wheels mm-hmm. on the other side of the street. <laughs> Bill, you know John Tobler. Oh, sure. How are you, Mr. Tobler? That's fine, Bill. Well, how'd you make out with Mayor Thoreau? I don't know, Lieutenant. I, I just don't know. Yeah. Well, while you were up there with him, I thought I'd drop in on John here. You know, he owns the property Margaret's house is on. Oh, no, I didn't know. Yes, and I'm uh, I'm awfully sorry about this eviction business. Those old houses are eyesores, and, well, I thought I was doing a public service by holding them down. I didn't know about this Margaret and her grandmother until Lieutenant Cruz told me. Mr. Tobler's willing to hold up the eviction proceeding. Oh, that's so. For how long? Well, we had everything set to start pulling down the buildings next week, but if I can find a spot for the kid and her grandmother in the housing project, I'll hold off turning the buildings down until they can move into the new place. Of course, though, if you can yeah, do sure, that... Yeah, sure, sure. I know you'll have to get going. Well, you understand. Yeah, sure. I hey, understand. here comes a little lady now. Hi, Margaret. Hello, Lieutenant Crush. Meet Mr. Toddler. How do you do? I'm fine, thanks. Well, tell me, any business, Martin? Just one car that's ready for a ticket. That's the green one down at the end of the block. It's got two chalk marks on it now. Sure looks like a ticket, all right. Holy smoke. What's the matter, John? That's my car. A wonderful Christmas party. <laughs> just look at Margaret. It's wonderful, Dorothy. Oh, I just wish. That... Now everything's going to be all right. Dad says that it's going to be all right. Oh, he's done so much for us. Your father, Lieutenant Cruz, and Lieutenant Crockett, and all the other officers. So much. It's the only reason to expect them to do more. Well, there's, there's still a little time. Oh, you have to be my age to know how little time can be. Oh, hello, Mother. You enjoying the party? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Uh, Bill. Yeah, what? I haven't told her yet. Oh, about the eviction, huh? Yeah, I haven't told her, but she'll know tomorrow. It's the last day. Won't you come and stay with us? Oh, please. No, no. That would be taking advantage of kindness. That, that would spoil it. Margaret, well, what have you got there? Did you see my walking dog? Look, I'll show you. You just push out the sugar, and she walks. And then she's darling. Oh, yes, darling, dear. Where are we going to put all my things, Grandma? We'll have to move out of the house to get all my toys and well, won't we? Well, we'll find room. I'm going to give a lot of things to my friends. No, Joey. Oh, look, it's the mayor. He's just come in. Yeah, he always comes to the Christmas party. Hello, Your Honor. Merry Christmas, Mr. Mayor. Uh, you fellas sure caused me a pile of worry. This little girl and her grandmother. Her great-grandmother. Her great-grandmother. Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I've got a little present for you, for you both. Oh, what is it? An apartment in the new housing project. Three and a half rooms, rent $18 oh. a month. You got it? The cinch oh. just used the pencil and the pad. Hey, that's terrific. Well, I'm going to put in a call for John Tobler. This means he'll hold up wrecking until the apartment's ready. Uh, when will that be, Your Honor? Uh, in the spring. Your Honor, I, I, I don't know what to say, Rich. But, well, it, it's about Christmas, Mary. I must tell you, Margaret... What's this all about, Grandma? Well, it's about how people, some good people, make Christmas come all the year round. All right, Margaret. All right, now. Open the door. Hey, be careful. Some of the fence still wet. All right, for good. Go in, go in, go in. Grandma, what? Isn't it gorgeous? Oh, it is wonderful, Margaret. There's the kitchen right in there. This is the living room. Grandma's bedroom will be there. Oh, my. Hey, Margaret. Yes, sir? You want to see your room? Oh, yes. Now, it's not all finished yet, but come on, take a look. Right through this door. Well, Margaret? Oh. Oh, gee. Gee, welcome. Uh, I'll beg them for myself with a window. Thank 
Thank you, Broderick Crawford. Thank you, Eileen Mary, for two wonderful performances. We would also like to express our gratitude and admiration to the Hudson County Motorcycle Police Corps for its cooperation in the preparation of our story tonight. And now Bill Hamilton, speaking for the DuPont Company. On an early cavalcade program way back in 1936, it was reported with awe that 18,600 chemists belonged to the American Chemical Society. That seemed like a lot at the time. But America has grown, and so has her need of chemists. Today, the American Chemical Society has more than 66,000 members. What does it mean to have so many chemists in our country continually striving to create new and better things? Well, most important, it means that the growth of chemistry has made hundreds of contributions to our better living. Entire new industries have been founded, and thousands of people have found new employment. New fibers, new medicines, more food and safer food, better transportation... Greater comfort and better health have stemmed from new chemical knowledge. And it's been a major source of strength in our national defense. The future contributions may be limited by a severe shortage of chemists, engineers, and other scientists. Too few high school students are preparing for technical careers. And yet, the opportunity has never been as great as it is today and appears to be in the future. To bring this opportunity to the attention of high school students and their parents... The American Chemical Society has prepared a booklet called Shall I Study Chemistry? It answers questions about what chemists do, what working conditions and job opportunities young chemists can expect, what personal characteristics favor success in chemistry. For a free copy, for yourself or for some young friend, write to DuPont Cavalcade, Wilmington, Delaware. Ask for the booklet Shall I Study Chemistry? You may also wish to bring this booklet to the attention of your local high school. The DuPont Company hopes that many young Americans will decide upon chemistry as a career. For DuPont depends upon today's students of science to help in supplying America with better things for better living through chemistry. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was written by Irv Tunick. Original music was composed by Arden Cornwell, conducted by Donald Borries. The program was directed by John Zoller. With our star, Broderick Crawford, you heard Eileen Mary as Margaret. Others were Ethel Browning, Sandra Spicer, Mary Pickett, Les Damon, Michael Kent, Stops Cotsworth, and Alan Hewitt. And this is Cy Harris reminding you to be with us next week when the DuPont Cavalcade will present The Secret Road, our star, Lee Bowman. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Red Cross Month. Each year, this organization answers an increasing number of calls for help, calls which can be answered only with your participation. This month, do your part to help the Red Cross Answer the call. The DuPont Cavalcade of America came to you from the Velasco Theater in New York City and is sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Tonight, just for laughs, listen to Red Skelton on NBC. Mm.